Good morning, everybody. My name is Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to God for another day in which we can ponder his holy word and learn to walk in his ways. And of course, those of us who are Christians understand that the word of God is the King James Version of the Holy Bible for those of us who speak English. Glory be to God. So, as you can see from the title of this video, what I want to discuss with you today, my sisters, is holiness. What is holiness ex exactly? There's a lot of discussion these days about holiness, and a lot of people who are curious about that topic come to this channel to, to learn about holiness. And in particular, uh, people tend to focus on a woman's appearance, her modest apparel, whether or not she is wearing a head covering. And this is good and right. Those of us who are Christians understand that a woman covers herself and she covers her sexuality as well as her beauty and also conducts herself with a meek and a quiet spirit. And this is very beautiful and precious in the eyes of God our Father. Hallelujah. However, a veil will not save you, and neither will a long skirt. And in order to understand holiness, we need to understand it from the Word of God. Holiness is not something that is made by our own efforts. It's something that is made by God in our hearts. And I want to talk to you about this today. It's very important, but it's very, very simple as well. Glory be to God. So we want to understand what holiness is in the eyes of our Father. When we seek to please God, we want to do the things that he said. Jesus Christ said, He that loveth me keep, keepeth my commandments. He also said, My mother and my brethren are these that hear the word of God and do it. So holiness is about following the commandments of God. And let me say, before we really get into this, that this is not about um, following religious rules. And many of you come to me, of course, those of you who are young in the faith, perhaps with questions about religious rules. You might want to say, will it make God mad if I do this? Or will it make God mad if I do that? And I understand why people ask this. It's because they've become accustomed to asking someone that they perceive to be a religious authority about God's rules. But that's not really what holiness is. So let's understand, according to the Word of God, what is holiness in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. Let's go to Luke chapter 6, and let's begin in verse 35 today. And may the Lord bless the reading of his Word today. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, even as your Father also is merciful. Be ye therefore merciful, even as your Heavenly Father is merciful. Now let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew. And let's read Matthew's account of this same conversation that came forth from our Lord Jesus Christ. Starting in verse 44 of Matthew chapter 5. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love thee, love you, pardon me, if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? 
And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So now we're hearing from the Word of God, from what Jesus Christ said, that we're commanded to be perfect, and this perfection is about the expression of mercy. Now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse, let's start here in verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy for I am holy. Holiness is the mercy of God. And God's people, we who are his children, follow after what Jesus Christ did. We walk as he walked. So we're merciful. And we understand that mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Mercy rejoiceth rejoiceth against judgment. Let's go to Psalm, Psalm 18. Starting in verse 25, with the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure, and with the froward thou wilt show thyself froward. You see, God desires that his people be as he is, and that's why he sent his only begotten Son. The way that we can be holy and merciful and kind even unto our enemies, even unto those who, who use us, who persecute us. The way that we can pray for our enemies and love our enemies and do good to those who do us harm is by the grace and mercy and God and the, of God, the grace and mercy of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, no man, no woman can make themselves holy on the inside. The way to be holy on the inside is to do as Jesus Christ commanded and obey his gospel and to obey his gospel. So what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is it just to believe? Is it to have a lot of wisdom about things like Greek and Hebrew or theology? Is it to be a religious expert? Is it to know the rules? Well, that is what the Pharisees and the scribes did in Jesus' time. It was people who wanted to have the wisdom and knowledge of God's word, but they didn't apply that word to themselves. Again, as Jesus Christ said, my mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. So to hear the word of God and to use it to get power, to get authority, to have wisdom, to tell other people what to do, to know the rules, well, that's religious hypocrisy. But to read the word of God and do it is the beginning of wisdom. And those that do the word of God have a good understanding. We want to be holy on the inside, and that begins by doing what Jesus Christ said and being covered by his blood. To be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ is accomplished not simply by belief, not by religious understanding, not by going to a seminary, not by knowing the rules. The way unto life is narrow and few find it, and it's a simple commandment that most people, sadly, refuse to obey. So the way to be righteous and holy on the inside is to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is as follows. 
Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, and verse 38. Then P Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many, as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then, that, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. So the way to be saved from this wicked generation and to walk in holiness is to have your sins remitted in baptism. Baptism in the name of the Lord. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. And we can know that very easily because that's what all the apostles preached throughout the book of Acts. And so we who want to be holy on the inside recognize that we can't do that by ourselves, that our efforts to, to walk in holiness are works of the flesh. Putting on modest apparel or putting on a veil without being holy on the inside is impossible. To do that just creates another place wherein we can be proud and self-righteous and hypocritical. In order to be holy on the inside, we have to understand the mercy of God and fulfill what he commands us to do to obtain that mercy and it's simple but many people simply will not do it and th this is to have your sins washed away a clean conscience before God and the circumcision of your heart so that you're no longer bound to the power of darkness you see if we want God to be merciful with us, then we need to be merciful with others. And this is the final portion of what I want to share with you. When we have experienced the mercy of God, and I know that I have, I began at that time to learn of mercy. I didn't know mercy before I came to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ by being baptized in his name. This world is not a merciful place, and I was raised in much cruelty, which is not unusual. And I knew nothing of mercy. But when God, by his son Jesus, saved me from my sins and the power of darkness, I began to know mercy. Beginning to know mercy is when one experiences it for themselves and they realize that they've been delivered from condemnation. They've been delivered from bondage to sin. And they can now walk in holiness. They can wa now walk in the mercy of God. But we don't want to forget. We don't want to forget what it is we were saved from and who it came forth from that we were saved. We do not want to forget that we got mercy, we got salvation that we did not deserve because it's a, a pitfall. And I, I know that the flesh rises up. I know it did for me. I started to feel like, oh, oh, now there are all these other people are doing this, that, and the other. Well, the thing is this, that I was doing this, that, and the other not that long ago. And how quickly we forget. How quickly we forget how broken we were and the mercy of God. And how quickly we can forget and then turn around and condemn our brother or our sister and not show forth the mercy of God. You see, the difference between a Pharisee and a Christian is that someone who's a religious hypocrite or a Pharisee does not follow the commandments of God for themselves. They take the word of God in order to express 
religious authority onto others to control the people, to tell everyone what to do, to exact from them payment and, and merciless judgment. But the judgment of God is not like that. We want to understand the judgment of God. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Let's start in verse 8. For my thoughts... Well, actually, let's uh, start in verse 6. Glory be to God. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The word of God is the word of salvation, the gospel, the hope, that we can bring to people in the world. And let us not forget the mercy and truth of God that we are partakers of. Let us not forget that there is one who is the exactor of vengeance in this world, and it is not us. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 starting in verse 22, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Glory be to God. This, my friends, my sisters, is the law of liberty. And we were made free by the blood of Jesus Christ, free from condemnation, free from bondage to sin and death, free to walk in holiness and mercy and truth, free to be God's children. Glory be to God. Let us not forget what it is that we were saved from. Let's not forget what manner of man we were. Now, finally, 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. So what is holiness? 
Holiness is when someone's been washed of their past sins by the blood of Jesus Christ and now is filled with the spirit of the living God. And God, we just read, is love. And the spirit of God that is in us manifests the mercy and truth of God and not a spirit of self-righteousness, pride, and harsh judgment upon others. Rather, we remember that God forgave us, and we continue in his word, and we do as Jesus Christ commanded. Matthew, chapter 5. Matthew, chapter 5. This, my sisters, is holiness. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So perfection and holiness are about the love and mercy in our heart for those that are lost in this world. I pray this message has blessed you. I remain here for you. Feel free to email me if you like or to comment in the comment section below. And may the word of the Lord go forth today and bless many in Jesus' precious name. Amen.